So, how the hell did a blind guy end up as not only a gun owner, but a gun dealer, and as such for many, many years? It's a question that comes up, and, and frankly, rightfully so. It's not exactly the most obvious choice. It sure as hell was not uh, for me. And I have addressed this here and there in the past, but figured this channel would be a good place to really tell a story. So yeah, sit down and I'll, I'll try to recount as briefly as I can in a few minutes. I grew up in Arkansas, so guns were around. But I really grew up in a, in a different time. That was the time when most people felt guns were for hunting, maybe target shooting. There weren't many AR-15s. Really about the only ones around were a few Colts. And AKs were just coming onto the scene when I was a kid. It, they just weren't that common. It was a different time, a different place. And just because I was blind did not mean that people didn't put guns in my hands for different reasons and different people over the years. And so I shot as a child, of course supervised and with plenty of safety. Nothing and no one ever was injured. But as most people are wont to do, I grew up hit puberty, and discovered girls and beer, or beer and girls, well, more in my case, vodka than beer. I've never had been much of a beer drinker. And just did other teenage things, got into music, mostly just hanging out with friends. Had a pretty normal teenage time, never got into too much trouble. A few small little things here and there just to keep life interesting, but maybe a stink bomb or two here and there as well in school, but just living. And so I really didn't um, touch guns for many, many years. Well, I was, uh, I guess, a sophomore in college. And we were having a New Year's party at my family's cabin out in the Ozark Mountains. And as most parties were wont to do, there was drinking and stuff, but again, no guns. We were, getting, we were cleaning up, you know, getting ready to leave the next day. And uh, one of the guests, who was kind of a friend of a friend, who became a friend of mine later, had a gun. It was a birthday gift, a uh, 21st birthday gift. It was a Wilson Combat reworked Colt 1911, or 1991A1, I believe. And he asked if I minded if he shot a few cans before leaving, just to, you know, practice. I mean, we're out in the mountains here. I think it was just, hey, no reason to head back into town. It was a nice day, New Year's Day. So, hey. So I said, sure. You know, he shot off a few rounds. Asked if I wanted to shoot. And I said, eh, why not? So probably the first time I'd handled a gun in a few years, at the very least. And I shot it. And it kind of led from there. You know, there's all kinds of details. It was interesting. I enjoyed it. And I'd already been looking for a hobby. I had tried model building and some other things. Uh, painting wasn't really an uh, option for me, unless you think abstract art. <laughs> and I, as much as I like music, I was never a creator, just a consumer, and just never had that musical thing. You know how it goes. I'm more of a historian and analytical person. So I kind of got into guns slowly but surely, picking up a couple over that holiday season and, and so on and so forth. And it was a good time because surplus was very inexpensive. You could pick up a nice, interesting gun from the former Comblock, the former Eastern Europe, for not much. And that was also what attracted me to it because of the history. I was already a history major in college as well as political science. And, um, yeah, I like the historical pa uh, part, I like the mechanical part, and it gave me something to do. And it all went on from there. And I'm sure I'll tell stories as time goes on, but that's where it started, from a, a very good, pure place. No, you know, no, uh, no aggressive uh, tendencies at all there, nothing like that. I just liked the history, and it was fun. And I just quickly discovered that it was a very social hobby or sport or pastime or passion where you can really get together with some very nice people and I think that's what kept me in it I just happened to start meeting very nice and accepting people honestly very very friendly folks not all of them are people you would think either they're not all you know high school only educated 
uh, right-leaning type people. There are some pretty far left people. There are also some people with PhDs and even in, in, uh, medical degrees that uh, own and enjoy firearms. It, it really can span all kinds of things because it's just a tool. And like any kind of tool, it's different people. It's like cars, you know. Uh, all kinds of people have cars. Well, how did I get exactly into being a dealer? The condensed version, I was uh, overseas for a bit, came back after working, and uh, tried to get a job here. And this is something that will be in another video, but let me tell you this. If you have a disability, despite what you... You know, if you don't have one, is that what you might think about people with disability? It, getting a job is really not easy. And after striking out more times than I can count, I jokingly said, well, hell, I will just hire myself. So I started doing this. I had already had some experience helping a friend out at his gun shop. And so I put in the paperwork for my own uh, federal firearms license and uh, I re received it and that was pretty much it. I mean, I had to work. I can't just sit at home. It was because, frankly, I had no other choice. But it's nothing that I regret. It's been a very good job for 10 years now. I've learned a lot, met, continued to meet nice people. Um, you know, avoid those that I don't. You know how that goes. Like everything, there's, there's the good and the bad. And uh, it's been a living because nothing else was coming along. It, it didn't matter that I had nearly a perfect GPA in college and two bachelor's degrees and a minor and uh, a master's degree. None of that mattered because disability. And I don't mean to pin it on it, but think about it from an employer's perspective. It, it, I, I, hold, I hold no grudges. I mean, I, it's just... It's just a reality of life. But yeah, that's how I ended up in this position, in this job, because it was what was available to me. And that's what most people in my position end up doing if they were employed, is um, being self-employed or working from home. It's just the most practical thing for us, unless you happen to live in a big city, which I don't. And right here, public transport is difficult. So I found something I could do primarily over the phone and through my computer and uh, it's been very rewarding ever since. So that's kind of the scoop there and how I fell into this and uh, yeah no regrets at all. It's been a very very good occupation that it's you know provided for me and my wife and our household and what can you say? I'll just conclude with you know don't don't judge now, everyone's a little different everyone has their own thing everyone does their own thing and we all don't fit into a mold I, I surely don't no matter which when you try to, where you try to put me I just don't really fit in I am I am me I'm Misha and I intend on being me and so that's why I am a blind gun dealer because it's just who I am and what fit and what fell into my lap <laughs> appreciate you tuning in and if you have any questions please do post them below and I'm sure this will come up in other ways and I'll tell stories and stuff in the future so this won't be the only video but I wanted to kind of give a brief introduction I really appreciate you, you know, tuning in if you could like the video and if you're more interested in that aspect do check out the link to our main page Mishiko it's in the description below I will catch you next time.